guys welcome back for February 2020 we are here to do your updates for your psychic reads as well as any astrology I need to enter into the video if I feel it's relative or any psychic downloads I've had I'll be adding them now yes this month we do have mercury going retrograde so you may find that some of these things will relate into technology communication uh, the way you're looking at things we're also going to be having that happen let me check that date 15th okay so it's going to be on the 15th we also will have mercury in pisces as of the third now that can be deeply spiritual in the sense that when it does come to you know all these aha moments and people from the past potentially coming back yes this can be relevant we're also going to be having venus in aries and that can be a very interesting placement really check in with the way you're operating because we're also having juno going retrograde which is going to be in libra so those of you that are libra the way you're operating within connections and, and collective energy really really making very crucial judgments when it comes, does come to our relationships our contracts our partnerships and especially with the capricorn frequency coming through uh the way you're going to be navigating the matrix for those situations is going to be quite unique now i will get into your reads zodiac by zodiac yes do look at your sun moon rising and potentially even your venus house because at times yes because i'm a psychic medium some of these energies may be playing in different aspects of your life so it may directly relate and again i will say a very warm welcome and thank you for subscribing sharing and commenting and if you do have a question do place it in the uh, box directly below and i will respond back to you into your read hi gemini we are here to do your february read for those of you who are new a very warm welcome now these reads i do them quite uniquely in that i tune in both psychically intuitively with the cards and both astrologically now if you do find that i'm drifting off into oblivion try not to take it personal because when i am channeling i do tend to drift off to actually tune into the um the visions of what i'm seeing and the things that they're actually sh my guides are showing me uh, your energy this month and this year is going to be quite unique now for the frequency coming through it can be a unique month for you you do have a lot of our eighth house placement now this is in um, real serious areas of your chart as well as with the 12th house activation and the moon being in leo i do find this to be quite a unique month for you now we deem the eighth house as the haunted house it's, it can be the subconscious mind it can be uh, very plutonian energy uh, but really the wounds directly connecting in with that now with your aries and chiron it is in your 11th house and that can be to do with your direct environment of people you're mixing with your hopes and dreams your goals but also in the past where that directly hindered you where it, it didn't benefit you to a degree and where potentially you know with your mindset and your um, belief in certain individuals and belief in certain things might come up in a trigger point if you're directly moving to similar goals similar people or even trusting people to get in I do feel it's a rewrite and I do feel for you guys you're sort of on the precipice of change but it is deeply spiritual and I feel that if you're taking the approach of being very grounded um, in the energies around you in the decisions that you're making and with the way you wish to proceed forward as long as you're in self-awareness I feel you'll handle this year and this month extremely well I also feel you guys will be deeply intuitive providing you can actually be grounded I do feel a situation also playing out that might have a bit too much going on and as soon as I said that I looked at my coffee and it was like oh, I feel like a cup of coffee to the point where needing to have a break needing to take time out having to achieve too many things and it can even be the people's energy around you being a little bit too full-on um, they might have been around you potentially last month and this could have been co-workers family members energies in general and really needing to, that to step back and have a look at the facade and I'm hearing it I'm hearing a collective energy of facade you know taking the mask off and looking deeper into the reality of uh, the strength of what the direct situation is 
With the eighth house coming through for you, really having to take accountability now moving forward. Uh, and d definitely your work life is seriously changing. So um, it can pertain to a lot of paperwork. And yes, obviously we have Mercury retrograde this month, so that can be problematic. But really having the patience and really, you know, digging into the bottom of it and following through and, and, and becoming more, oh, what would I say? I feel every Mercury retrograde, each of us does uniquely upgrade a skill. I also feel the patience, the tolerance, the compassion and understanding is stretched again. And I feel you guys are deeply intuitive of that. You spiritually respect and understand and it's going to be extremely important to understand and trust universe with all these changes you potentially could be going through. These changes are important for your soul evolution as well as your direct environment. I am saying you wishing to change career. Now the career itself, it doesn't have to be that you're leaving that domain. It's like taking it up a notch, stepping up, you know, um, being very selective about who you're sharing information with, looking at actions over words, really being able to intuitively uh, read the person's body language, understand from which perspective they're coming from. And I do feel the need to be cautious about over articulation, especially with Mercury retrograde. Hmm. Your first card already is speaking to me in layman's terms. It is an earth energy. It's, it's spiritually speaking, you may feel energetically you've got the ten of earth. And these are my old cards. These are the ones I started with and I had very close spiritual connection with them. Um, it also can directly relate to you where you're going back to a way of being. You've done a full 360, you're spiritually looking at life in February from a very unique angle and it feels the aftermath of situations and stepping back and actually having an observation of these things. And I see you really looking at a repetitious pattern that has been playing out, especially with the eighth house and the particular positions for your zodiac sign, Gemini. I do find that the key to it is breaking I wouldn't say breaking routines, but it's breaking it down to hone in on that puzzle piece and finding what a repetitious pattern is. And this can be one in which is playing out around you or one that directly is impacting you physically, spiritually, emotionally. And I do feel it's really the key this month. I do feel you guys are going to have clarity on that. This is very 12th house. It's a very grounded approach, but you know, it may be after a situation you're sitting there, once grounded, you will deeply understand the reasons why certain pieces needed to be moved in your life. And maybe even by the end of the month, this is what's going to happen. Ten is a completion and with, with it coming through that it's a full moon, it is a completion as per se. With the Leo energy, you'll find, as I've mentioned in the other videos, it's, it's very similar to the shell of the crab cancer um, and inside it's very um, soft it's very emotional it's very connected with family and tribe and I'm seeing a similar frequency with you um, very similar in a sense that you know with with you being ruled by the sun your energy coming through in a I don't know why I said you're ruled by the sun hmm. okay some of you might actually have a Leo rising. Some of you may actually be dealing directly with a Leo. On a very separate level, with Leo being um, in the full moon, what are they trying to show me? One minute. 
it's looking at the internal of what's going on over the external and again anchoring the energy in to comprehend the reasons why but again it's coming from a very spiritual rational mindset and you know half the time with spirituality it doesn't appear to be rational at the time you're going through it so if you are potentially going through something right now it's not going to make sense till after the fact but trust this too shall pass and with this transformative stage in your life especially with the blocks in your road and i'm saying you know with your creative endeavors i do really feel there can be some frustration there okay i'm feeling as though you you're looking at work you're looking at your energy and the places you're placing your frequency into again with the masculine energy which the sun is really governed by the masculine frequency inside of us as human beings the moon is the intuitive the feminine aspect of self when it comes to hunter gatherer getting things done you know you needing to own your power that area of life seems very dominant at the moment and it may have been a requirement of what you needed to be for quite a while and it has actually um it's really time to internalize and i'm not saying internalize i'm saying going inside with the leo moon and looking at the things of how situations make you feel understanding your worth understanding your value and looking at where those wounds potentially could be coming up I'm also feeling the energy of your back it's like a lot of burdens and it, this could be physically or spiritually but really having to handle quite a bit and coming to that realization and epiphany on it and in the past you've got the seven of earth and again seven is deeply spiritual especially at a financial level it's really great for manifesting 2020 is unique in that you know with the training wheels that we had with the nodes being in cancer and capricorn we've been looking at these things and taking accountable action fine-tuning situations you worked very hard last year all of what you did although there is a pause it is proceeding forward and this is like actually understanding there's always a, a calm full storm and i'm feeling storm beneficial on this occasion I feel really getting to a point where any recuperation time you've had or any slowdown in a situation is very temporary because I do feel this is massive movement forward in all areas. I don't know why at this point of the reading, you know, romance is coming through, um, especially pertaining to romance. I have pulled the romance section, but even in the last read, um, in the Pisces read it came through well and truly before I started channeling the messages for romance but there is a huge subject matter coming up when it does pertain to romance but we'll get into that in a moment try not to push down your emotions There might have been individuals around you, especially, okay, I'm getting a few messages here. Now, you've got the page of water in reverse. And again, <coughs> with that energy, both at an intuition level, at, at, again, both Pisces and Scorpio are deeply psychic energies. Um, Cancer is deeply intuitive, governed by the moon, and I'm feeling any of these signs. But at the same time, I'm feeling more with this in reverse. It may have been scenarios you dealt with and regaining that trust in your intuition. Not necessarily, again, not necessarily can this be about you, but it can be about the individual in question. Now, this is this can be an area coming back in a pain body experience. Um, and again, it can be in many areas. This is the general part of the read, and I'll get further down into other aspects. But with this overall, in the month of February, when you look at it, potentially look at how you were and look at how you are now. Then with that energy, if a person from the past does return, a goal, a hope, a dream, 
or an area you wish to return to in your life understand you will be coming to it from a different angle this is even in business so however this is there is this this flower that has bloomed inside you in a transformative sense and it's it's very different in the way you're going to approach it so you're not going to get the same outcome you potentially may fear you're going to get the same outcome but by doing the internal work and understanding not there's too many variables in life you know so it's very similar to science unless you get the complete chemistry and the correct environment it's not going to repeat that pattern it's very scientific so you know hold that with you in a blessing in a mindset that it won't transpire the same there's different key players in the story that it's a different time it's a you get my gist but there is a maturity in this frequency then you've got the two of water again similar energy clarify it's probably because both of these cards really are connecting in with the energy of love you may be very focused at the moment on your own uh, be it you're in a relationship or not very focused in on uh, your mind your creativity uh, trying to be as grounded as possible the practical aspects of life also the emotional what is and what isn't i i feel like there's a lot of decisions to make i do feel you're going to be really surprised by some of these energies of you know how much of a change there can be in such a short space of time you've got unexpected joy i do also feel there also might be a conversation in relation to the past now some of you and this has been coming up quite a bit in the collective energies there could be external parties that are quite influential on you and again it can be a repetitious pattern i feel intuitively when it comes to dealing with people in general this intuition that is really built inside you i do feel it's very very crucial all of this work you've done on yourself spiritually emotionally and the credit you need to take you need to take that credit you have worked incredibly hard and it's almost like you opened pandora's box and it's at your feet and there's an you know it's really going through those emotions spiritually in your life especially in the month of february in hindsight you'll understand it is going to be a blessing in disguise so any situation that is becoming arduous please understand it will make perfect sense by the end of the month it's going to serve a purpose even by your intuition amping up and looking at who you want in your domain and who you don't as long as you're following your intuition and you're not becoming your own worst enemy because these are very angry cards these two there's anger and there's falseness and there's a snake on the card pertaining to the two of water it is connecting in with a relationship that continues to grow closer forgiveness a positive resolution to conflict now if there is a person from the past that you heard of anger and you know them crosswise there potentially could be communication coming in at a very separate level i am feeling some of you may be experiencing interference when it comes to this connection it, again it can meet in many areas of life because this is the overall way in which you're going to be tackling it and i feel communication is going to be the key even though we're mercury retrograde i'm feeling you know less is more allow the delay in communication allow uh, deal with communication this month like a traffic light allow it to come in absorb breathe pause pretend you're chewing food minimize the words so use less less is more uh engage whether you feel the person is receptive enough to actually receive the information and, and choose where it's coming from is it coming from red anger is it coming from 
you know, yellow in a child? Is it coming from green heart chakra? You know, and move it through those chakra fields so that when you're communicating it, it's kind of um, going through a filter. Because this can be a very tricky time, especially with the eighth house placement. Now, in the area of you know, your work and your money, you have the Queen of Air, and this is a very, again, a very psychic energy, uh, really needing to be very objective when it does come to making decisions with your clear goals, with your finances, um, with your crystal ball, so I just speak, the woman is actually holding a crystal ball, I do feel you're wanting to be quite independent, uh, you may have been independent and very realistic with your finances, but I do also feel there's some real bright ideas that could splurge through this Mercury retrograde. And Mars being in Capricorn, the things you're going to fight for, you'll more be inclined to um, take accountability, but be very careful because it is falling in your eighth house, which is the haunted house. Now, this connects in with, um, you know, It's supernatural, it's occult topics, it's intense romances, it can be uncovering the reasons why and the complexity of situations. You know, we tend to say it's black and white, but there's there's many shades of grey and it's really honing in on that. So it might not make sense to other people or you may uncover a truth as to the reasons why you do things and, and why potentially some of these things can be self sabotage but documentation would be okay and when I say documentation journaling to find a repetitious pattern I keep hearing this repetitious pattern go over oh, there you go okay there can be an expense that you can eliminate and when it comes to a creative project really fine-tuning it with the mercury retrograde but it's positive that it's in Capricorn. It's only that ending cycles and beginning new ones, allowing old things to go so that new can come in. You know, sometimes we have the polar opposite energy. We tend to feel if we let go, everything will fall down. Yeah, at times it can, but it wasn't already decaying, Pluto energy. As long as you're being independent and you're transforming, Yes, you can have power within your hands, and I, I feel I feel it to be good. But take the light approach, because the card does actually suggest for you to take a humorous approach, and this can be comedy, but, you know, do have a laugh about certain things. Try not to take things too seriously. This too shall pass. I'm also feeling you may not have enough time to see people having to work too much, focusing on too much, on needing things, and this has to come to an end, finding the balance. There's also a truce. For some of you, if you were owed money, it can be coming back. For some of you, if you did have a separation and you were waiting on those finances to come in, this too is coming in. And others of you, I do feel you're really looking at your contracts and you're trying to pull them in because you've got the marriage card. This also can pertain to a joint venture when it is in a relationship and it is going to, to merge. I'm also seeing business partnerships and business management. Have faith in the process. Some of you, if you are single and you're working, you may actually, and again, I am hearing potential pay rise, potential position. But this can take two to three months but at the same time, you could also meet a life partner at this location. Now, within your family and tribe, you have the four of water. Uh, there is a stagnant energy here, and there are some, you know, there might have been some misfortunes surrounding this family. Uh, this could also be around last month's eclipse and some trigger points that came up, ways of looking at things. Cancer's your second house. And again, some of you may have had a separation and you're, you're looking at the finances and trying to get balances. Some of you within your relationship as well and connecting in with family uh, might be going through some sense of adversity and financial hardship. And it can be very separate. It can be just very at an emotional level, feeling not connected in with the tribes and really needing to transform that situation. Uh, you're not wanting to fight though, you know, and it might, might be there are some very strong energies and some very, you know, not quite acting according to plan. I'm also seeing a, a delay in that transformation, 
I feel if you shift the energy back onto what's going on with you, you should be grounded. But I do feel somehow they're going to rope you into the situation. Now with your health, you have the world in reverse. And look, with that, I'm really feeling some cycles haven't completely wrapped up. And, and again, it is linking in where it's directly impacting relationships. Some of you are waiting for a karmic cycle to end so that you can have a reunion with this person, so you have, can have a reconnection. And this is even within partnerships. If you've been in a partnership, we do have Juno retrograde uh, in February. Now, it is in the sign of Libra, which again is justice, is decisions. Let's have a look. Bear with me, Gemini. For you guys. It does fall on your creativity, romance, children, artistic expression and aha moments. So Juno and retrograde. Juno is going to be in Libra for a year. In February it is going retrograde. This can be where old contracts and new begin. For those of you that have gone through a separation, paperwork and things to that degree, there can be a delay on it. But it also can be finalising of it with the Leo moon and... You know, as I've always mentioned, if this is breaking of contracts in any shape or form, the delay has been impacting you and you're wanting this cycle to complete. This is an old cycle and you're really wanting it to end. That potentially it's not even a hard feeling. It's It can be emotional even if you did or didn't love the person anymore. So you're finding, you're looking at it from a, a very adult spiritual perspective. There was an emotional connection there and it, the story has ended for those of you who it's relevant. Others of you, this could be where you're looking at this person in your life and you're wanting that kind of ending to happen. And you know that there might not be finances joint. It, it just feels very spent old energy. Yeah, it can go both sides because this is wife in reverse. Again, it is an ex, it's an old energy, it's a, it's a separate energy. You've literally got a partnership in reverse, you've got wife in reverse, and you've got uh, fortune in reverse. It's like cutting all the old ties. Out with the old, in with the new. Eighth house, wanted house, yeah, it's saying the same. Now, what you're not seeing, you have the four of fire. Now... 2020 is a vibrational four year, which means if we directly tune into the correct tribe, mix with the right people, hone in and place our energy into the right buckets and really push it towards that. We will have to work hard, but we'll get the best out of the situation. Contentment, peace and abundance, a happy home life, a successful completion of a project. This is where love and balance and manifestation comes in. Let's get into your romance. Yeah, I'm feeling a completion of a chapter, but I do feel a lot of spiritual feelings and um, deeply reflective. Even when I was trying to tune into a song for you guys, it was just so quiet. I'm not saying you're quiet. It, the hermit energy is coming through. It doesn't, again, it doesn't mean you're in hermit mode. It's just the frequency surrounding you at the moment. You, you need a hand all there. Get in the moment. You may get triggered. Uh, I, I don't feel you're wanting to really be around a lot of people. It's not your, you know, it just, you're just sliding through this month initially. We'll do a check in during the month. You got the Ace of Air as your crowning energy. Interesting. The crowning cards in reverse, which I think is really great. You have the eight of air. Now this for some of you might be a spiritual connection. You've had a complete shift. This could be a soulmate. This could be a twin flame. This could be your current relationship. The crowning energy being eight means it's been going on for a while. This could even be an old pattern. The illusion of being trapped, a lack of self-confidence, afraid to take action. Now this could be the way you're seeing the person. This could also be something about growing. Because it's in reverse. There you go. 
I'm going to tune into that song. I'm hearing all the white horses. I can hear it in my head now. So, I whinged about the fact no song had come through for you. In the past, something didn't come together. You had unity in reverse. There wasn't the change, and that can be in your environment, in the, in the direct relationship. There might have been external situations, differing views. Uh, there's lots of spiritual symbols on the moon energy. And it, it, he looks like a magician. So, Archangel... Sandalfon, I can't pronounce it. Traditional viewpoints or methods, spiritual organisations, speak out mentors and like-minded. You didn't mesh, it didn't mesh, there were things going on, things weren't coming together, it was arduous energy. At the heart of it, there is a lot of emotions here. It's, this can be where this connection goes to the next level. This is where you're ushering in this frequency. Be it a single, be it a not. This energy is up, it's upgrading. It's going to be upgraded. And I feel for a lot of you, you may not even see it coming. You may currently be in a relationship and you're in a state of very contentment, acceptance of what it is. And that's really with the 12th house for you guys, the way I'm tuning into your energy. It doesn't feel that there's any push-pull. In the past, yes, where you get to by the end of the month, or even at the beginning of the month, it just does not feel there's a push-pull. You, you're deeply still. I do feel you're just in acceptance of situations. You also may be attending a social event, and around that time, it's a signal that the clock started, and this proposal is coming in for you, this movement forward. Now, again, even in contracts, this can be going to the next level. It can be you're in a relationship and you get a contract offered to you. But for many of you, this is going to be a signal that this is going to be a very, very spiritual connection. And this is really going to go the distance emotionally. This is a very shy person. Um, they speak with their eyes. The cards in reverse, again, it is king of air, which is positive. Now, how again, how they were before may not be the way they are going to be now. It does feel quite romantic. They're, they're different to the way the card is coming through. They're, they're coming through... Uh, with charisma, this person, male or female, has charisma. Their demeanour is changed, but they also feel quite sneaky. It's quite it's sneaky in an amusing way. Uh, this can be in a surprise sense. They don't want you to know. So whatever they're planning, they don't want you to know this, and they find it quite funny. But they really do care quite a bit. There are external energies around you, though, that are very jealous. Around the time when this connection comes back into connection, moves to the next level, is offered to you, or the surprise comes through, people directly know this is very spiritual, because this card breaks down to a 7, and 7 is a very spiritual number, both in an emotional and physical, and I do feel at a financial and physical level, this connection coming into your life, all that is already there, that you're content with, because this is a very spirit, you'll know if this directly relates to the current individual in your life. You're accepting of it, you're taking it from where it is, and you're moving forward, and you're attempting to be in the moment. Other people around you are deeply envious of this. Uh, many of you will be aware of this. Some of you are needing to leave one situation so you can have this. So there's a few messages coming through. And it might even be meditation upon the fact that you already did and that process you went through now the finalisations here. But for many of you, it's leaving old patterns behind and moving forward. They have made 
a decision. Uh, the card that they've got here is in reverse, the two of air. When it does come to you and things bang up in the air, it's no longer like that. It's they've already made a decision and they know, uh, you know, it's it's almost like both individuals are manifesting this simultaneous life and it's coming full circle. I feel in some shape or form that, look, although they're coming back, for those of you that aren't in a connection, there's also a very separate energy here. Now, this could be a child. This could be, um, this could be an external situation playing out around the time. If you're getting to a point there's too much going on, you need to take a break. Because you do have the ten of fire. And this could be even with disputes and anger and conflict. This could be even projected towards you and your connection. It can even be the evil eye. We all know that. I mean, it's always been there, right? It's white lighting yourself, but either getting to the crux of it, but you are really, really around Mercury retrograde, this is quite natural. If a person hasn't done work on themselves, and I'm feeling these individuals have, the external individuals that haven't, you'll see it, it will be the black and white of situations, but you need to use the eighth house, which is the house of the haunted, right? You need to be looking at the shades of grey of the reasons why. Not that you need to fix their whys. That's something they need to do. But it can help you stay grounded. And again, this can be a family-related dynamic. And again, go and look at their signs if you directly know them. But I feel this is several energies. This is three, maybe more energies. There's quite a few people. This can be a whole family especially the red coming through, but they're a bit sharp with the tongue. It's going to happen whether they like it or not. It really is. I'm hearing the term Noah's Ark. Sounds really strange. It's, it's almost like the analogy they're showing to me is you have everything you need inside of you. The Leo moon is going to help you look inside. And funny enough, we do move into the new moon in Pisces on the 23rd, and they are critical degrees. So once you move into the Pisces frequency, again, it is deeply spiritual. It's deeply intuitive. And I feel with your Gemini energy... It's the surprises that come out of left field, you will be able to intuitively sense it. Trust your intuition, it can prepare you. So have a bit of time in the first week. Again, I will do a check-in during the month, uh, mid-month, and I'll also be coming live for the collective energy reads. What I am sensing here is... Again, there is the evil eye around. You can do gin removal. You can smudge stick yourself, have your crystals, clear your house, and tune out of their energy. If you're aware of them, be in mindfulness and awareness of it. I would say by the full moon, do some internal work. Anything that comes up needs to come up and let it out. Don't be like punching people and things. I'm just journal, you know. Take note of it, understand, work through it, be gentle on yourself, notice a repetitious pattern, release, drink fluid. Any trigger points, I'm feeling you're going to deal with them fine. I don't feel you'll be bothered to have conflict. You'll probably be dealing a bit like a Libra. And Juno is a Libra, so that might be the reason why. But I, I just feel you're 50-50, you're, you're in observe, obs, observation mode. That's really what's coming through. Yeah, getting grounded, watching things, watching things play out. And this has been potentially from Christmas last year. You have been working towards your goals and many of these things are going to come full circle by the end of this month. Love and light and I'll see you during the month.